Go away from that person. They're not helpful to you. And they're not helpful to themselves either. So you got to think about this. Um, I discovered this naturally occurring pattern. Call your friends you love and ask them the simple question. Call your friends you love. Um, the ones who you know that if you called them at three o'clock in the morning, they would answer the phone. And if they called you at three o'clock in the morning, you would be there for them. Do not do this with family. Do not do this with siblings. Do not do this with your spouse. It doesn't work. Those relationships are too close. Do it with the friends you love and ask them the simple question. Why are we friends? And they're going to look at you like you're crazy because the part of the brain that controls feelings and behavior doesn't control language. In other words, it's hard to put into words. Ironically, you stop asking the question why, because the question why is an emotional question and it elicits emotional responses. Like you ask your kids, why are you home late? Shut up, dad. But if you say, what were you doing that you're home late? They'll answer the question, right? So you, you, after your friends say, I don't, why are you asking me this? You switch to what questions? Come on, what is it about me? What specifically is it about me that I know that you would be there for me no matter what? and they're gonna hem and haw and it's gonna be very difficult for them and they're gonna struggle. Don't help them, don't let anybody else help them. You have to let them go through the uncomfortable process and you have to play devil's advocate. So they'll say things like, I don't know, you're funny, you're smart, I can rely on you. And you say, good, that's the definition of a friend. You have that with all your friends. What specific, specifically is it about me that I know you would be there for me no matter what? And they're gonna go through this process of, and you're gonna say, good, that's the definition of a close friend. What, you're gonna keep, keep at them and eventually, they'll give up. Eventually they'll give up and they'll stop describing you and they'll start describing themselves. And this is what my friend said to me. They said, I don't know, Simon. All I know is that I can just sit in a room with you. I don't even have to talk to you and I feel inspired. And I got goosebumps. In fact, I'm getting them right now, right? So what they did is they articulated my value in their lives and I had an emotional response. So you'll get to the point where they'll say something that you will either get goosebumps or you're well up with tears or something will happen. You will have an emotional response. That's the part of the brain, the limbic brain that controls those emotions. You won't get the exact words of your why, but you'll get in the ballpark. And my friends, what you'll find is if you do it with multiple friends, you'll get very similar, if not the exact same answer, because the value you have in their lives is the same. It's you. Here's how you know if someone's your friend. A. You can tell them bad news and they'll listen. They won't tell you why, you know, you're stupid and, and why that bad thing happened to you and how something worse happened to them once and, you know, derail the whole conversation. You can actually tell them bad news and they'll listen. So that's a good thing. And then this is a weirder thing. You can tell them good news and they'll help you celebrate. And that's a really good way of deciding who you should have around you because if you have someone around you, you know, something good happens to you and you're kind of afraid to even admit it because, you know, God, something good happened to you. It's like that, you let that be known and it'll certainly be taken away. So, you know, you, you come out and you sort of tell someone half-heartedly that something good happened to you and they, they give you a whack and then talk about, you know, so the great thing that happened to them three years ago or worse, the great thing that happened to someone that they knew three years ago. You know, it's like, Go away from that person. They're not helpful to you. And they're not helpful to themselves either. And so you want to surround yourself, you got to think about this. You got to surround yourself with people who want the best for the best part of you. You can hang around with weasels and losers that are trying to pull you down to justify the fact that they're spiraling downhill as well. And you know, the upside of that is you don't have to have any responsibility and you can all whine about how wretched life is, you know, so that's pretty attractive. But I would say it's also a me bad medium to long-term plan. And so it's, it's acceptable and desirable to try to surround yourself with people who are facilitating your development. You know, and you might say, well, I've got people around, I know them well, you know, they're, they're, they're not doing that well and, and, they're, and, and they don't fit into that category. It's like, what's your point? What are you gonna do with them exactly? If they'll, if they'll listen and cooperate with you and move towards a better future, great. If they don't pay any attention and they keep doing the same damn things over and over and they're not going anywhere and it's painful, then maybe the proper thing to do is say, you just have your misery. I'll go off and have my life and maybe you'll wake up at some point in the future and think that's a better way of being. Because just putting up with it is, all, well, they call that enabling, right? You put up with that sort of behavior, you're providing tacit consent for it and even tacit approval. It's like, it's a bad idea. You have 
I would say both the right and the responsibility to surround yourself with people who are good for the best part of you. I imagine a world in which the vast majority of people wake up every single morning inspired to go to work and come home every single day fulfilled by the work that they do. If people learn their why, it makes them better qualified and more importantly more confident to choose the careers, choose the jobs and find the companies that create environments in which they are more likely to be inspired and feel fulfilled. And that's the goal.